cause us to think and act that way. And he knocks, knock, knock, and offers healing. So he likes to reveal in order to heal. I love Proverbs 4, 23 through 25. That's our first scripture tonight. Healing uh, the violinist, yes, I hope so. Because the Lord has healed me and in my in my life in town, I am part of a group of people that are in the healing ministry, like prayer. The same things that I talk about here is what we talk about and what we help people see in, in town. So Proverbs 24, 23 through 25 says, look at this, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Have you ever thought about that? Don't use your mouth to tell lies. Don't ever say things that are not true. Instead, keep your eyes focused on what is right and look straight ahead to what is good. Now, isn't that neat? What a great thing to think about. Great to remember and great to inspire us to be careful which thoughts we dwell on. Violin is suddenly lies when he's lying in bed, okay? And um, I want to tell you, sure, yes, thoughts come. They do. They just pop in our head. Some of them come from our own self. Some of them, the devil pops in there. And the good thoughts the Lord gives us, the Holy Spirit inspires. But some thoughts just come. Angry thoughts, regrets, fear of the future, and many more that do not meet the Philippians 4.8 criteria, criteria, which is to think on these things, true things, honorable things, just things. Pure things, lovely things, commendable things, things of excellent, things worthy of praise. When those thoughts come, we should, we could, and we can run with them. Anything that meets that criteria. But, at the same time, when thoughts that do not meet that criteria rise, we can catch them. Think about this. Think about, have you ever seen a net? Remember butterfly nets when you were a kid and you had a butterfly net and you wanted to catch the poor butterfly in your butterfly net? Or if you go fishing, you might have a net to catch the fish or the crabs with. Wouldn't it be nice to have a net that would catch every random thought that did not line up with the perceived and revealed will of God for us? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? So when those thoughts that do not meet the Philippians 4 8 criteria pop in our heads, we can catch them. We can take the thought captive and intentionally choose to rehearse the truth of the word. And I bet if we tried, we could think of a biblical truth to counter or modify every single wrong or misleading thought. I have this thing I say sometimes if I, sometimes, it's, it's been better since I uh, actually talked to somebody and let somebody in town pray for me. But if in the evening when it starts to get dark, I get this really, really sad that can want to come wash over me. And I say sometimes right out loud, I'm, I'm not okay. I say that to God. But immediately I take that thought captive. No, that's not true. I am okay. I am in Christ. I have all I need to live the life he's given me to lead. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Take them captive. Recognize them. This is not true. That is not what you want to say about yourself. And this it's not. It feels like it in that moment. But it's not true. So we can take them captive. <laughs> Yes, we can, Mario. And now I've lost my place. Misleading thought. And this proverb tells us why. Why do we want to take those... No, it's my fault. I started thinking... I told you what I th say. Um, why do we do that? The thoughts we dwell on, and that means to rehearse, to repeat, to blab about, begin to run our lives. And I never saw that before. And honestly... 
Aren't negative thoughts quite often a lie, or at least a partial lie, which makes them an entire untruth? Like when I think I'm not okay, and but then I quickly say, yes, I am. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I have all I need to live. It's a lie. Yes, they are always lies. And look at verse 25 from that same proverb. Yes, it does. It makes grooves. Keep your eyes, your mind, your thoughts focused on what is right and good. Which kind of means to me... Think on those things which align with scripture. And I want to read that proverb one more time. That portion of the proverb, okay? Be careful what you think. Because your thoughts run your life. Don't use your mouth to tell lies. Don't ever say things that are not true. And keep your eyes focused on what is right. And look straight ahead to what is good. Have you ever heard the secular saying? It says, um, well, let's look at this first. An article in Bible.org states that all sin begins in our thoughts, which the Bible often calls the heart. Jesus said, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. That's from Mark 7, 20 through 23. No one, yes, that's another one. I think I have it listed later. No one commits these outward sins without first having committed them in his mind. If we want to grow in godliness, we must win the battle over sin at the thought level. The minute you think it, the minute your eyes look with lust at something, look somewhere else. And that same author goes on to say, uh, he talks about Philippians 4.8, Paul exhorts us to develop a Christian thought life. His words should not be divorced from the context. Practicing verse 8 is essential if we want to develop and maintain healthy relationships, which are in the earlier verses. A Christian's thought life is also integral to a life of joy and peace in every situation. Since our thoughts form the basis of our behavior, a godly thought life is also essential for the obedience to which Paul exhorts us in verse 9. Clearly, Paul's thought life was at the heart of the contentment. Remember what he said? I have learned to be content in all situations, whether abounding or abased. Abounding or abased. Remember that? So Paul is telling us the way to be whole people in our relationship with God and with each other and within ourselves. But before we look specifically at what Paul is teaching, we need to think about something. And this is the actual quote of verse Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and look, look, and the God of peace will be with you. You notice the criteria. The reward. Practice these things. And then the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always with us. But he, I think when he's saying we'll be with you, it means manifest. You will be able to see it and live it and notice it. And Paul gives us a whole lot to think about in Philippians. We may want to spend some time reading the epistle of Philippians. And Cornideo, I believe, has taught that one. Isn't that one of the ones you, he did? 
The next scripture about thoughts is from Psalm 19, verse 14. I love this. A lot of times a preacher, a pastor will say that before they do the sermon. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The meditation of your heart is your thought life. So what sort of thoughts are acceptable in the sight of the Lord? Do you think it's okay to label ourselves or others as stupid, a failure or no good, or any other negative thing? When the Bible tells us we are created by God in his own image, and Jesus considered us so precious that he literally died for us, yes, there it is. But the words of my mouth. Isn't that a beautiful passage? And no, it's not okay to down yourself, all right? It's okay, it's good to confess your sin and your shortcomings and ask the Lord to help you, but that is not your identity. Your identity and my identity, we have one identity, just one, child of God, and maybe even beloved, cherished son or daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, dearly loved, of great value and purpose. And then... And we're staying on this topic the entire time tonight, okay? Because I think it's really, really important. And then we have Psalm 139, 23 and 24, which says, and this is a good prayer to pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And then... Lead me in the way everlasting. Try me and know my thoughts. It's, it's so all over the place, isn't it, when you look? See if there be any grievous or wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God's way. And then, look at this warning and truth. It's found in Mark. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, Wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. And where do these things come from? Surely not from God. Isaiah 26, 3 is another favorite of mine, and it's one of my life verses. A life verse is a verse that has shaped your life in a powerful way. And it says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you, meaning trusting God no matter what, trusting his goodness, trusting his love, trusting his compassion, his mercy, his justice, trusting everything about him and refusing to dwell on or entertain evil thoughts which lead to immorality, theft, murder, adultery, and so on. Now, really. Is it possible to do or act out of any of those things without first dwelling on unwholesome or untrue thoughts? Is it? And then we have Romans 12 too. Another wonderful passage that I love. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, look, by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And notice, how do we renew our mind? 
scripture for sure, but also taking those thoughts captive. And that scripture is 2 Corinthians. Isn't this wonderful to ponder together? I think it's really exciting. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And look, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So, practically, and tonight we're doing this, we invite God to show us lies that we believe, false thinking, stinking thinking, and we renounce or reject those. We break agreement with them. We capture them, so to speak, and we replace them with biblical truth. Is it easy? Yes and no. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it a process? For sure. Is it God's work in us, the work of the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. There's no other way. We cannot ever do it on our own. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says, To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt, look, through deceitful desires, oh, those thoughts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Do you see it? Old self. Put off that sort of thinking, which leads to behaviors that are not in line with God's, with God's design. And put on who we really are, which is children of God. The next scripture. I think we might have read this, but we might not have. But anyhow, we're going to read it again. Yes, so stay there. But what, Matthew 15. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. Heart, and this defiles a person. And remember, quite often they're using heart and mind, which is your thought life, interchangeably. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, fault, witness, and slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anybody. And they were talking about people that kept the letter of the law, but not the heart of the law. We want to be heart of the law, livers, keepers, and doers, don't we? Not a list of do's and don'ts, not any Old Testament um, laws, but the law that, remember where it, in the scripture it says, in the, in, when Jesus comes, he will write his heart. Law in our heart. That kind. Luke 6.42 says, The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good. An evil person, <coughs> out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Don't you know? How do we get good treasure in our hearts? Well, at new birth, or rather, how do we recognize good from evil, old man, old way from new? We fill our hearts and we fill our minds with the knowledge and love of God. Like the song said, yes, by the Holy Spirit and by the scripture to reveal the written word. And sure enough, like that scripture said, if you walk in along and you have a bucket with a lid and you take off the lid and you pour it out, what comes out? What comes out is whatever's in that bucket. If we are shaken, and we will be, by events in our lives, we often react. Our reaction, 
The words or deeds can reveal what is in our hearts. And yes, transformation is a process, but he who began a good work in us will continue it into the day of his return. That's my paraphrase of Philippians 1 6, which says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in each of you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. And look what Jesus said. <laughs> this is a little bit. And we're almost finished, violinists. We're early tonight, but I only wanted to do this one thing. Jesus said, you brood of vipers, <laughs> how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So tonight, as we go through the next weeks, or months, or years, or forever, we may want to ask the Holy Spirit to help us recognize thoughts that do not honor God, do not line up with the truth, and can easily cause us problems. He can, you know, and he will. So, Father, thank you for um, helping me remember to guard my mind in the knowledge and love of God and to take captive thoughts that do not line up with your will. I ask you, Lord, to help each one of us. Help us to remember who we are and help us to remember who you are. And when things that are difficult or, or sad or scary or whatever happen, help us to remember not to live there. We don't live in a pity party. We live in the will of God. We live in the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God. So, Father, help us. Help us to recognize thoughts that don't line up with the truth and begin to refute them or at least discard them. If we need to, if there's something that's been a, a besetting thing that we just can't, this thought that just keeps coming back that's not true about, about ourselves, especially, or even about something from our past, maybe we could write down and then tear it up or even burn it and pray and give that to you and ask you, Lord, to renew our minds by the continual indwelling and filling and washing of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we bless you in this night, and I ask you to um, comfort each one who needs comfort. Convict us where we need conviction. Heal us where we need healing. Restore us. Need restoration. And help us, Lord, to live and move and have our being in you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it for tonight. And violinist is going to play, so it's not quite it. It's okay. Oh, no, don't be afraid of Calvin. She's afraid you're going to pick her up. Don't stamp your feet. Look. Oh, the violin. She doesn't. Thank you. 
that's the key right there. Amen.